Hi everyone and welcome to this video that I have entitled Is This a Risk-Free Trade? Of course this is a cash flow option spread series video and uh, what I want to do today is I just want to talk about a recent trade that I took that showed a risk-free trade and in fact uh, there are a lot of things that you can do to um, make this as close to a risk-free trade as you possibly can. It's one of the best trades that you'll see as far as a probability is uh, is concerned. But before I get to just jump into that trade, I do want to make sure that everybody understands that when I talk about this, it's received in the context that it's given, that there are risks in trading. And uh, this video is for informational purposes only. So when I talk about this, and, and I will give a lot of context to this trade, uh, but uh, I, I want to make sure that th there's no misunderstanding here that I'm not saying that there are not a set of circumstances that could create risk. In fact, I'll show you a set of circumstances that could create risk um, in this. And I'll also show you how to have a very, very, very high probability of avoiding those circumstances. So um, with that being said, I'm just going to jump right into the trade because it is, it is a very interesting scenario. First of all, this is a diagonal option spread in SPY. And I was filled at a credit of O2. And I was filled at a credit of O2 on a rather large lot size, actually several trades. And uh, this uh, specific one, rather large lot size, credit of two. And what you're looking at is a projection graph of the this trade as of expiration. And you'll notice here that as uh, since I have a credit of two, two cents, that means that there's no risk to the downside. And based on the structure of the trade, it also means that there's no risk to the upside. This is uh, of course, a call spread. If you have a, a credit of two and a call spread, you're guaranteed to make at least $2 if the market tanks. Uh, if the market increases, if the market skyrockets, the way that I have the, tr the trade structured, there's also a minimum $2 gain there as well. And in between, what you'll see is a wide profit zone. And that profit zone ranges anywhere from about 100 bucks to a peak of around 400 bucks and um, maybe 350, 350 dollars, and uh, and then in between, obviously there is a bit of a sag in that um, between uh, f let's see 405 and 410. There's a bit of a sag there, right? But notice how much room there is for a hundred dollar profit. The the zone for a hundred dollar profit is pretty high. And I'm going to reference that here in a minute because uh, what you're going to see and what you're going to realize is that what this risk projection is telling us is not what is actually going to happen. And that's where people get into trouble with these risk graphs because there are other things going on. So what happens is there's a projection, there's a calculation that is made that is projecting the value of the long options as of the expiration date of the short options. And it's a projection, they're guessing. And there's a ma they're guessing with a mathematical calculation. And that mathematical calculation doesn't take into account a lot of different things. And so um, what I look for in these types of trades is room for error, room for error. So this is a $100 profit zone here. And um, and obviously that you don't see any risk anywhere on the graph. That's because there is no projected risk on the graph. And you'll also see that this is the trade that I took. Originally, I took a hundred lot on this particular trade, and then I exited partial of that lot size with profit. So you can see here a closed profit of thirty-two hundred dollars, an open pro uh, profit of forty-four ten, four thousand four hundred ten dollars. And um, and that one is uh, uh, basically based on where the market is, where you can see there, it's kind of at the profit peak, but we're not anywhere near the expiration. And so you don't see that kind of profit um, in that expiration just yet. But again, the, the net profit between the open and the closed is 4,400 bucks. And a lot of people see this trade. And they, obviously, the first thing you're going to ask is, is this trade 
too good to be true? And the answer to that question is yes and no. In one aspect, it is too good to be true, and in another aspect, it is not too good to be true. And I'm going to tell you right now that I will take this trade every single time it's available. Now, again, this is a projected graph. And so if you understand how the options work, which I've been doing this for a long, long time, 1987, I took my first option trade. Uh, and I've taken hundreds and hundreds of these trades that you see. So I know how these work, not from theory, from actual taking of the trades. And so one, the one thing that I want to make sure that you understand is that you can understand certain things about this projected graph. A, it is a projection. And B, that projection cannot be wrong in certain areas. So, for example, if the market tanks, I am guaranteed $2. This projection is uh, cannot be wrong in that. Uh, the projection cannot be wrong if the market moves to the upside. Um, if it skyrockets past all this uh, pro these profit peaks, I will make $2 on this trade, given that you can get, given that you're filled, right? Um, otherwise, you would just simply let the thing expire and the, it would come out to $2. Of course, you would have to pay the fees and all that. So you understand them. And when I say $2, I mean outside of fees or outside of assignment fees, if you end up getting assigned and just let it assign itself out. Um, but nonetheless, that's the way the math works. But if you understand how the projection graphs work and how the calculations work, then you understand that there's an issue here. And that issue is what I call the dead zone. It's a sagging area of the profit zone in between two of the profit peaks. Okay, so I've highlighted it in pink. That's where the risk is. And um, the reason that there's risk there is because at one point by expiration or before the end of expiration, the value of the long options in this spread could be wrong. The ending projected value could be wrong, and that's going to drop those uh, that um, uh, dead zone, potentially. It could either raise the dead zone or it could drop the dead zone. But on the outside, right, on the outside of this, if the market moves down, then the worst thing that can happen is everything expires worthless and I make $2. On the upside, that the worst thing that can happen is all of the extrinsic value goes away from the long options, at which point I make $2. Okay, so that's how the math works. But in between, we don't know exactly how much these long options are going to be worth. So we have to understand how they work and what other things, what other factors go into uh, creating these um, uh, projected values. And so here is what you actually might experience. And in fact, this is what was experienced on one of the trades if it was held until the expiration date. And if the market dropped into this dead zone, you can see that where it was projecting a profit, it's actually projecting a very, very small loss. So if this was the end of it, if I showed you nothing else, this trade would still be worth it because there's a there are two significant profit zones here and the risk zone in between is very very small it's a very small risk zone and it's a very small potential loss and um and you're, there's no risk to the downside and there's no risk to the upside so um, that being said this is as of the day of expiration okay it's very crucial that you understand this because there is more to this trade. So if the market closes in the middle of the dead zone on the day of expiration, then you might suffer some risk there. So that's where the risk is on the trade. But you know what? You know how these work? Take a look at the day before expiration. There's the dead zone area. Do you see a dead zone there? And this is fairly realistic. So the day before is actually more realistic than the day of. And I've adjusted the, uh, uh, the volatility to reflect a drop in volatility, which would ultimately drop the price of the long options. Nonetheless, but you can see the day before, there's a nice profit zone 
at 60 bucks, and there is no risk zone. It, it's like it's disappeared, or it doesn't actually materialize until the last day. Now, sometimes I've seen these materialize, um, or excuse me, one day or two days before the expiration. But I know, I know where, when those are going to happen for the most part as well at certain types of trades that that can happen. On this one, most likely not going to happen on Thursday, but here's two days before the trade. You'll notice that the projected profit is actually a little bit higher two days before the trade expires. And again, you'll notice the dead zone area. Not only is there no sag, there's no dead zone, uh, you actually have a pretty decent profit sitting there at uh, about 60 bucks, 40, 50, 60 dollars somewhere in here. And a nice profit zone here, profit peaks out at about 100 bucks. Uh, so that's that's two days before. Now what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you something from my trade partner. Trade partner is a trading platform that I created, and I use it to help me analyze the risks and the actual realistic expectations of any option spread. And so here's what I'm going to show you. Column one is the ending value of this spread, the, the exact spread that I placed, the exact spread that I've been showing you, on expiration. Okay, now the blue arrow it, um, uh, are the strikes that I've taken. And everything above and below is the same exact spreads, only you're shifting the strikes by one point. So, for example, if you had a credit spread of 400 on the short side and a long of 405, and that comes at a credit of three. Well, what's the price of the credit uh, 401, 406? What's the price of the 402, 407s? What's the price of the 403, 408s? Right, so it's the same credit spread, just on a different place as far as the strikes are concerned. So this is the same thing. So this is the peak, what you see here, the peak of the uh, profit projection. And you'll notice the value of that's $244. Now, if I were to get into a trade at a $2 credit and it ends at a $2.44 debit, then I make $246 on this trade. But if the market moves up, then that profit starts to go away until eventually it goes to just $2. If the market moves down, eventually that profit goes away until it hits the dead zone. So you can see the dead zone here, right? So... In other words, if the market moves down into the dead zone on expiration, down into the dead zone on expiration, that's where you see a small credit. So if I get in to this trade at a two cent credit and it and it closes or I get out at a nine cent credit, then obviously I lose seven dollars. Right. So that's where the risk is. And they, these are actual prices. So I'm giving you the actual results of um all of the spreads or, or the projections of all of the spreads based on where it is relative to the market. Now look at column two. Column two is one week before expiration. And you'll notice that there is no dead zone in column two. And that's because this dead zone doesn't really materialize. It might start materializing the day before, but it really doesn't materialize until the day of in this particular spread. And so what this means is that as long as you get out before expiration, you have a very, very, very high probability of success. So you'll notice here, there's a 73 cent debit, 57. So this is the trade that I'm actually in. I'm in at a credit of two and it's at a 57 cent debit. Now, if the market moves down, then I'm going to start giving some of that profit away. You can see here it's a 23 cent debit, but that's still a profit. It's a small one, but it's a profit. If the market moves up, it holds on to the profit a little bit more. You can see a 70, 73 debit here. You can come up here to 72 debit. It's going to average out up here, but that's because this is the graph. Whoops, that's not the graph. Well, I'll get to the graph. Uh, that's one week. Nonetheless, you can see the actual prices here, right? So that's the one I'm in. That's the one I have a $4,410 open position profit because I took a partial profit early. And why did I take a par uh, partial profit early? Because I know that the market can move back down. 
or move back up out of this um, out of this profit peak zone, right? And so might as well take a, a nice profit on the trade. And uh, and then and you hold on for maybe a little bit more on the rest of it. So I exited 80 and I have 20 left. And here is the one the uh, the graph one week before expiration. And you can see here the profit peak. Um, there's a nice little leveling out of, at about 50 bucks. It can actually go up to about 60 dollars. Uh, and it's sitting at 57. So this is very very accurate with what we see. In fact, it's it's a little bit uh, muted because we saw a $73 debit in there, right? So that's a $75 profit. So the actual profit in one of these in the profit peak up here uh, is uh, is a little bit bigger than what this graph is showing. So again, no dead zone. And look, if the market moves down, you've still got about a $10, $15, $20 profit. Even if, it, even if it moves down significantly, if it moves up significantly, it's going to hold on to its value a little bit better. And I'll explain that. Well, I, I'm not going to explain that in this video. It just will. Um, and so there's ample, ample opportunity to exit this trade before it ever reaches that risk or that risk uh, zone materializes. So if you hold until expiration, there is risk. Or if you hold, uh, if you hold too long, there is going to be risk. I'm not going to put an absolute time frame on it. It might be you know, a few hours before expiration. I've seen the day of expiration and, and this trade is fine. Um, I've seen uh, s uh, similar trades where you start to get into that dead zone a little bit the day before, maybe in the afternoon. But before that, there's plenty of time to uh, exit out of profit. So if you hold on until expiration, there absolutely is risk with this trade. If you get out early, the probability of consistently making money on this trade is greater than any opportunity I have ever seen. And that says something. Now again, there are there are caveats to that. Um, there there are circumstances where this exact trade could produce a risk before a day before, um, and mainly that would happen if the market starts consistently moving up and the overall volatility begins to drop. Then you might see this trade doesn't look as good. But there are things that you can do to account for that. And I'm not going to get into all of that. Uh, nonetheless, I did want to show you this trade and show you um, how you can create a just an astronomical probability. I can't say risk-free, but it's as close as you will ever get in a single trade or a single opportunity. So now, of course, that's assuming you get a credit on the trade. I will take this trade even if I can't get a credit. Sometimes it might be a $5 debit. Sometimes it might be a $10 debit. I'll still take the trade because prior to expiration, I have a very high probability of making something. It's not going to be a lot, but it's going to be something. And if you understand the compounding, this is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity that can be compounded. So sometimes the credit is not available. Sometimes it is a debit. Uh, so, for example, here's a similar trade. Uh, that's filled at a debit, and I did something slightly different with this trade, and this is an actual fill, uh, to create that debit, but I did it so that it would beef up the dead zone. So I actually have even a lower probability of that risk zone emerging in this particular trade because of a slight adjustment that I made um, to how the trade was structured. So it's a $16 debit, which means that I have $16 risk to the downside and $16 risk to the upside. And by the time we get to expiration, obviously this profit, this whole profit zone is going to come down a little bit, but you don't see a sag in this dead zone, right? It's uh, it's the slope is fairly consistent to the upside. So the probability of that actually dropping below zero is even on, on expiration day is, is almost nothing. Uh, and so I, I could do that by taking the risk and putting it on the outside, right? Either to the downside or to the upside. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how I approach uh, these trades. And you might be asking yourself, where can I get access to these kinds of trades? And the simple answer is you want to sign up for the Cash Flow Trilogy Daily Signals. You're going to see uh, opportunities like this uh, every single day. Well, not exactly like this. I have, sp I have specific types of opportunities that I post in these signals. What I do is I give you three trades a day. At the end of the day, there's no market watching. Uh, you either 
put the order in and you don't. Either it gets filled or it doesn't. But you'll get three trades a day, one neutral, one bullish, one bearish leaning. One neutral, one bearish leaning, one bullish leaning. All with mathematical probabilities that are fixed in your favor. And you're not going to take all three trades a day. You only need one or two per week. In fact, if all you were to take is that trade alone, you don't need anything more than that trade. So you can watch out for that trade. So I, with these signals, I also pro, um, uh, post the projection graph so you can see what it looks like. I talk about the dead zone, if there is any dead zone. I try and keep away from dead zones uh, with these signals um, just so that you don't have to be concerned about it or as concerned about it. Every now and again, I'll post one that has a, a dead zone. But you don't need to take three a week or three a day. You only need to take one or two a week. And then you are able to compound your account very efficiently and create geometric growth. Now, you're also going to get, uh, with that, you're going to get four instructional videos on how to properly execute the trades and what the realistic expectations are for each of the trades or the trades in general, I should say, um, and how this all works, how the projection graph works. I kind of explained it here. Uh, but you'll get um, you'll get more instructional videos uh, along those lines. Plus, you'll get a trading plan, an exact trading plan that you can follow. It's a template, but you can follow it with these signals. That includes the money management, the compounding, and uh, instructions on how to execute those. Plus, I'm going to give you a bonus on this specific trade. I'm going to give you what to look for, when, and how to take advantage of it every week. There is a very specific time that you can get it, get into this trade, potentially at a credit. Not always, but at a credit, and it doesn't last very long. So I'm going to tell you exactly the trade, and I'm going to tell you exactly when to look for that credit and place that order. And hopefully you'll get filled um, uh, as, you, uh, as you move forward. And I'm going to tell you exactly what to do if the market starts to tick up consistently, how to change the structure ever so slightly to further eliminate the risk of that dead zone. So you're going to get all of that. And I would it's, it's very affordable. I made it to where anybody can subscribe to this. And it, there's nothing else like it out there. So you can either uh, go ahead and sign up, uh, click on the button on the website, or you can call Spring at 918-203-7547. Tell her you watch this video. She'll get you signed up and she'll get you taken care of. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and I look and I look forward to see you on the calls.